Welcome to a video on determining the inverse of a matrix using augmented matrices. If A is an n by n invertible matrix such that A times B equals B times A, which equals the identity matrix, then B is the inverse of A denoted with this inverse notation. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when we find the product of these two matrices. First we have A times B, and then we have B times A. Now remember, usually matrix multiplication is not commutative. But let's go ahead and see what happens in this case. And we're going to use the calculator because we've already covered how to multiply by hand. So we're going to press second, matrix, go over to edit, press enter, and go ahead and enter in matrix A. It's a two by two. And then we have the elements four, seven, one, and two. Let's go ahead and enter in matrix B. Second matrix, go over to edit, and then down to matrix B. Again, it's a two by two, and the elements are two, negative seven, negative one, and four. Let's go ahead and find those two products now. Let's go back to the main screen, and then press second matrix A times second matrix matrix B, and press enter, and we can see that A times B is a two by two identity matrix, and now let's find B times A. And you notice that the product is the same. So since the product of these two matrices is the identity matrix, we can say B is the inverse of A. Let's go ahead and write this out. So what that means is that matrix B is actually the inverse of matrix A. So now what we'll do is take a look at how we find the inverse of a given matrix. And we're going to use augmented matrices to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an augmented matrix in the form of matrix A on the left and the identity matrix on the right. So what we'll do then is perform row matrix operations that will result in the identity matrix being on the left side and the right side will become the inverse of matrix A. So the main idea here is to convert matrix A on the left into the identity matrix, and then the right side will be the inverse of matrix A. Let's go ahead and give it a try. So if we want to find the inverse of this matrix, we'll set up an augmented matrix where the left side will be the given matrix, and the right side will be the identity matrix. And since this is a two by two matrix, we want to make the left side look like the right side. So we want a one here, a one here, and we want these two elements to be zero. So if we want to have a zero in this location, the corresponding element would be a three. The least common multiple of four and three would be 12. So what we could do is multiply this row by three, multiply this row by four, and then subtract them. So we're going to replace row two with three times row two minus four times row one. And if we want a zero in this location, corresponding element is three. The least common multiple of two and three would be six. So we're gonna multiply row one by three, multiply row two by two, and then subtract. So we'll replace row one with three times row one minus two times row two. Let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. So we're going to have three times three minus two times four. It's nine minus eight, that's one. Here we're going to have three times two, that's six, minus two times three, which is also six. Six minus six would be zero. And here we'd have three times one minus two times zero, that'd be three. And here we'd have three times zero, which is zero, minus two times one, that's negative two. Now let's take a look at row two. We're gonna have three times four minus four times three, that's zero. 
And here we're going to have three times three, that's nine, minus four times two, that's eight. Nine minus eight would be one. And here we have three times zero, minus four times one, that's negative four. And then lastly, we have three times one, that would be three, minus four times zero, it's still three. So notice now the left side is the identity matrix, which means now the right side should be the inverse of matrix A. Let's go ahead and write this down, and then we'll test it on the calculator. So A inverse should be three negative two, negative four, three. Remember from the previous screen, this means that A times A inverse should equal the identity matrix, and A inverse times A should also equal the identity matrix. So let's go ahead and check this. Go to enter in the given matrices. So second matrix, go over to edit, press enter, and we're going to enter in matrix A here, three, two, four, three, and then we'll put A inverse in matrix B. Okay, let's go ahead and find these two products. So matrix A times matrix B. And that checks out. And let's go ahead and find matrix B times matrix A. And we have found the inverse correctly. Let's go ahead and see if we can find a three by three inverse matrix. So now we're gonna have a three by six augmented matrix. So we have matrix A on the left, and we'll have the identity matrix on the right. So we want the matrix on the left to become the identity matrix. We want these three elements to be zero, these three to be zero, and then all of these to be, and then the main diagonal to be ones. So if we want this element here to be a zero, we could add it to row two. So let's go ahead and replace row one with row one plus row two. And if we want this element here to be a zero, we could multiply it by two and then add it to row one. So let's replace row two with two times row two plus row one. So adding row one and row two, we'll have one, zero, one, 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 and zero. And now multiply row two and then add it to row one. Two times zero plus one, that's one. Two times one is two plus negative one, that's one. Here we have two times negative one, that's negative two plus two, there's zero there. Two times zero plus one, two times one plus zero, that's two, and two times zero plus zero would still be zero. And we left row three the same. Now if we wanna get a zero here, we're gonna have to work with row three, otherwise we would lose this zero here. So let's multiply row one by two and then subtract row three. So two times row one minus row three would give us a zero here. And then going down to row three, if we take row three and subtract row one, we'll get a zero here let's, without losing this zero here. So let's go ahead and do that. Row three minus row one. So two times one would be two minus one, that's one. Two times zero would be zero minus zero, still zero. Two times one is two minus two, there's a zero. Two times one, that would be two minus zero, that'd be two. Two times one would be two minus zero. And two times zero, that's zero minus one, so we have negative one. Second row stays the same. Third row is row three minus row one, so one minus one, zero, zero minus zero, two minus one, one. Zero minus one, negative one. Zero minus one, that's negative one, and then one minus zero is one. Okay, we're close. You can see we have a main diagonal of ones. We have zeros here. We need this element here to be zero. So what we'll do is, so we'll replace row two with row two minus row one. We're at a space here, so what we're gonna do is see if we can squeeze it in over here on the left. Row one and row three stay the same. And so again, we have row two minus row one, so we have one minus one, that's zero. One minus zero, that's one. Zero minus zero, that's zero. One minus two, that's gonna be negative one. Two minus two, that would be zero. And then zero minus negative one becomes a positive one.
So again, the left side is now the identity matrix. The right side should be A inverse. 2, 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, and negative 1, negative 1, and 1. We're a little bit short on time, so you may want to go ahead and test to make sure that A times A inverse and A inverse times A does equal the identity matrix. I've already done that, and it does check out.